Uh, on the case of Mr. Tabera, I just want to be clear. So are you saying that you knew prior to the last election about the allegations against him? And if you did, uh, why did you allow him to run? Could you explain that? Whenever there are allegations against uh, members of the Liberal Party, part of the process is uh, for the leader to be informed. At the same time, uh, the process that kicks in is a rigorous uh, uh, process that has been established to ensure that every single uh, allegation or complaint around misconduct is appropriately uh, investigated, dealt with, uh, that there are uh, conclusions and and uh, next steps and recommendations that are fulfilled in this case, uh, as in all cases, uh, those processes and those steps uh, are uh, are taken. An Ontario Liberal MP is in serious hot water, and he has been for quite some time. Yet, the Canadian public is just finding out about it all now. In fact, Marwin Tabara spent Easter weekend in the slammer for doing some truly crazy things. Just look at this in the National Post. As Marwin Tabara sat in jail on Easter weekend after his arrest on allegations, he broke into a home he had stalked for months and assaulted a man and a woman inside. The sitting Liberal Member of Parliament may have thought his world was about to explode. Instead, he slipped out the next day after a bail hearing held by a video with the court official 120 kilometers away from his Ontario riding, with local police not saying a word. The Prime Minister's office didn't crash down on him. TV cameras weren't parked outside his home. There were no embarrassing headlines. Rather than fielding calls from concerned constituents, Tabara sent out a Facebook message. However, friends, that Facebook message was not about how he would explain why he just ended up in the Crowbar Hotel for the Resurrection Weekend. Oh no, he was instead thanking frontline workers during the coronavirus pandemic. Now let's go back to that National Post article for a second. When both the Guelph Police Service in Guelph, Ontario, about 90 kilometers west of Toronto, and Tabara himself decided to keep the arrest and unsavory allegations secret, it kept everyone in the dark, including Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, to his own account. We learned about this issue, the arrest, the charges, everything that had happened on Friday, Trudeau said referring to June 5th when the National Post and two other news organizations published stories on the arrest within minutes of each other having learned of them two months after the arrest. I mean, this whole thing is absolutely, completely nuts, right? But that's not altogether true that Trudeau just learned about this issue just now. The arrest... Maybe, maybe Trudeau just found out, but I don't believe that. Lots of people knew that Tabara was in the throes of legal troubles for harassment, and it came onto the radar of Trudeau and the party during the last election campaign. The Liberals just didn't think it was something that, you know, voters needed to know before they put an X beside Tabara's name on the ballot because winning a riding even if it means electing a potential serial harasser of women, well, that's just more important than telling the truth and doing the right thing. Just look at this. Liberals allowed MP Marwin Tabara to run in 2019 despite sexual harassment investigation. Member of Parliament Marwin Tabara, who had a court hearing today on assault and criminal harassment charges, was approved to run for the Liberals in the 2019 federal election despite a party investigation into allegations of sexual harassment made against him during his last mandate, CBC News has learned. The Liberals looked into detailed allegations of misconduct made against the Kitchener South Hespeler MP that included inappropriate touching 
and unwelcome sexual comments directed at a female staffer, according to sources with knowledge of the allegations. The allegations date back to the 2015 election campaign, the source said. The sources who spoke to CBC News requested anonymity, citing the risk of being blacklisted within liberal circles and it negatively impacting their careers. Yet, the liberal committee in charge of candidate vetting greenlit this guy. Boy, does that ever send a strong message to shut up to the next woman who wants to come forward with allegations against a Liberal MP. It tells me these women fear their careers being ruined while the male Liberals can continue to advance within the Liberal Party power structure. Believe all women indeed. But when we look at the recent examples of harassing behavior that the Liberals were willing to tolerate, Frankly, I wonder why anyone is remotely surprised that Tabara was allowed to run for the Liberal Party in 2019 and why anyone would think it was unusual that the Liberals would cover up that sort of behavior to win some seats. Let's look at Kent Hare, shall we? Allegations of sexual harassment against the Alberta MP were made by at least two women stemming from his time in the Alberta legislature. These allegations were independently investigated and found to be credible. However, Hare was allowed to run again for the Liberal Party and get this. Trudeau and Hare blocked the detailed findings of the investigation from becoming public even though his accusers wanted the findings to be made available to everyone. The self-ID'd feminists and the PMO blocked even the women from seeing the results. Look at this. The review found Raworth's claims were legitimate, but details of the independent investigation were kept under wraps by the PMO due to privacy concerns. Now, thankfully, Kent Hare lost his seat because Alberta voters, unlike the Liberal Party of Canada and Eastern Liberal voters, well, they don't much tolerate powerful men who prey on women. But the fact remains that whatever an independent investigation determined Kent Hare to have done to these women, well, it wasn't enough for the Liberals to swap him out for another future Liberal loser. But it's okay because Kent Hare underwent sexual harassment training with another sexual harasser, you know, his former boss, Justin Trudeau. And it's Justin Trudeau's own admitted creepy behavior with women that I think is the real reason Trudeau allowed Hare and Tabara to run for the party. He set the standard he set the example. Trudeau admitted to groping a young female reporter in Crescent, BC at a music festival in the year 2000, saying to her, I'm sorry if I had known you were reporting for a national paper. I never would have been so forward. It's pretty clear Trudeau means he wouldn't have groped someone with the power to tell a lot of people what he had just done to her. Then Trudeau blamed the woman for experiencing his unwanted fondling of her body differently than he did when the world found out about his behavior. Just watch. I, I, I apologized uh, in the moment. Uh, I certainly feel that, that uh, uh, if, uh, um, again, I, I don't want to speak for her. I don't want to presume how she feels now. Uh, I haven't reached out to her. No one on my team has, has reached out to her. We don't think that would be appropriate at all. Uh, so I'm, I'm responsible for my side of the interaction, which certainly, as I said, I don't feel was in any way untoward. But at the same time, this lesson that we are learning in, and I'll be blunt about it, often a man experiences an interaction as being benign, or not inappropriate, and a woman, uh, particularly in a professional context, can experience it differently, and we have to respect that and reflect on that. Official Liberals, well, they put up with that creepy behavior from Justin Trudeau and did not revolt. In fact, they circled the wagons and offered complete absolution of Trudeau's sins against modern feminism. Not a single one of these people resigned in solidarity with Trudeau's victim. Nobody defended her. And Trudeau covered up his own bad behavior for two decades while lecturing the rest of us about his brave, confident, modern feminism. Because 
it was 2015. Well, it's 2020, and the liberals are still covering up for the creeps amongst them. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreed. Because of this sort of critical coverage of Justin Trudeau and his liberals, well, Justin Trudeau has banned us from his press conferences. But we're fighting back, and you can help us do that. If you'd like to see our coverage of how Justin Trudeau has banned us and to help us in our legal battle, please go to letusreport.com.